So we're looking at Revelations um, 21 and 23. And it says, And the city had no need of the sun, that sunlight, neither of the moon, to shine in it. It didn't need it. For the glory of God did lighten it. The glory of God gave light to the city. This is the New Jerusalem. Uh, after, like I said, the whole, the heavens and the earth had passed away and God created a new heaven and a new earth. And they're describing, the, uh, the, the Apostle John is describing what he saw the New Jerusalem looked like. He said there was no need for sunlight. There was no need for moonlight. There was no need for any of those lights. The Lamb, he said, and the glory of God did light it. So the light came from God himself. And the Lamb is the light thereof. The Lamb of God is Jesus Christ, is the light thereof. And then if you read uh, Revelation 22 and verse 5, and there shall be no night there. There will be absolutely no darkness there. There will be no concept of nighttime and daytime because there will be no sun. There will be no night there. There will be no darkness of any kind there. And there shall be no night. And they need no candle. So we're not going to need candle. Candle is what they knew back in the day. So we know now electricity and all of that. There will be no need for any other form of light. The lesser lights, like I said, these are lesser lights. There will be no need for the lesser lights to light up the, the, the environment for mankind or you know, humankind. To, you know, no need for electricity, no need for candles, no need for fire of any kind. Neither light of the sun. He said, no need for sunlight. For the Lord, God, giveth them light. His own light. Himself will shine bright and clear where everybody can see. Um, and they shall reign forever and ever. And if you read verse 4, in 22 verse 4, he says, and they shall see his face. You know, I told you, I'll, I'll be able to explain to you later on, when we can behold that light face to face. He said, then they shall be able to see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. That's verse 4 of Revelation 22, verse 5. But we'll be getting into that later on, you know, uh, how we get into that form. Um, that that we, when we're able to dwell in that nature, or that form of being, that enables us to see his face, the raw source of that light, and, and be able to live and, and withstand it, you know. Um, anyway, so that's it. So, God is light, and in Him, in him there's absolutely no darkness at all, not a drop of it. And now, having established that, I would like to say also that any kind of light that you can imagine cannot compare to this light. Atomic energy, atomic bombs, atomic light, energy that comes from atomic bombs or, you know, uh, fusion, is nothing. It's like lighting a matchstick in comparison to this true light. This is the raw light. This is the original light. This is the light that brings forth the lesser light. Atomic energy and all that, they're all lesser lights. They're all less, lesser sources of power and energy. This is the raw power this is the raw energy okay um, now we're going to be looking at how creation took place and how this light brought forth all the other lights that we're talking about and then how everything works based on the knowledge of this truth that God is light right if we go to Genesis chapter 1 verses 14 to 18 this is when God made um, sunlight we're going to be looking at that. Let's look at when God made sunlight. Genesis 1, 14 to 18. Remember, in verse 3, God said, let there be light. And um, in the original version, what, what that scripture said there was light be. <clears throat> it wasn't let there be light. It said light be. And light appeared. So it wasn't a long sentence, it was just bop, bop, light beat, boom, boom, it came, and it was everywhere. It's like a big bang. And um, and light means, light, light, like I said, is the environment. The only environment that creativity can take place is in an environment of light. This light, the true light. It, it wiped away the darkness. It, or obviously, darkness disappears at the instance of light, instantly. Um, so when he said light be, because he needed that first thing, he spread himself across the universe, like I said, and God was everywhere. 
and now I mean he's already everywhere but f for the purpose of creation he, he spread himself across that place the darkness was there because he had not allowed himself uh, he has not spread himself across the span of the space where he wants to create the universe okay so he put himself there now so darkness disappeared from there and his light himself was everywhere now um, light remember we said darkness was void of productivity it was formless it was shapeless it was uh, without form it was void it was unproductive no creativity no inventions nothing like that could take place in, a, in an environment of darkness now light is the uh, is the opposite when there's light this light there's order there's the accurate arrangement of things there's structure there's systems things are put in shape things become productive there's productivity when this true light is in place anywhere creativity inventions and and and, and order uh, you know and and progress prosperity productivity development everything can work when this light is in place okay i just wanted to uh, to stress that point because we're going to be um, you'll be needing that so just keep your know, make note of that just make note of that point and um, that light means order uh, I mean it, it give, brings order and um, enlightenment and development and progress it's the only environment where creativity can take place so that's why God had to do that spread himself the original light across first before he could create other things now we're going to go to the lesser light we're going to go to the creation of the lesser light the sunlight and what instruction he gave to the lesser light and why he created the lesser light from the original light. So we go to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14. It says, and God said, let there be lights. Again, with his words, he spoke. Everything he was doing, he was speaking into existence. He was giving instructions by words. You see, so his words were the carriers of that light into our sphere to impact on it in order to create or manifest the thing that he wants okay so he said verse 14 and God said let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons okay so this light would help us tell signs and to tell the seasons and the times it's for time you know that's when time was created because where he's coming from it's timeless but that's when he created time, when he put the sun and all of that in place, we were able to measure time and all of that. Um, and for days and for years, you see, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. Verse 16, and God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. So he made... Um, we invest with um, 17 and God said to them in the firmament of heaven give light upon your 18 and to to rule over the day and rule over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good so he gave the Sun and the moon their purpose the reason why he created them to the man humankind can tell the time and the season so time he created time you see we function in the in the um, um, confines of time you see but um, we're not able to uh, have understand or have the consciousness of timelessness or a zone where time has no bearing has has no impact he created time the true light brought forth a light that we could use um, to to time ourselves you see so the earth is rotating and then the, the Sun is you know uh, is 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 uh, because of the sun we're able to then tell day and night and then the moon shines at night time the sun at daytime and we're able to calculate 24 hours you know within the 24 hours how many hours of sun sun or daytime that we have and how many hours of nighttime that we have and where we said to tell the years you see and the seasons so it would tell us when we've had 365 days and a year has passed and we could understand the cycles based on the rotation of the earth and, uh, and the sun uh, uh, obviously and the earth going around the sun and then the, 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 the earth itself spinning around its own orbits so all that was put in place by God for time to exist 
So we were placed in this creation of God, in this um, confine, in the confines of time. But it doesn't mean that there's nothing that exists outside of the time that we can measure. No, you can see that the, the, it came, the original light brought forth from itself, you see, a lesser light and gave that lesser light an instruction to rule over day and night and be an instrument that will enable humankind to tell time and seasons because they will need it. You will need it for agriculture, you need it for everything. You will need to tell the time and you will need to know the seasons. You need to measure these things because we've been... We, we were created and placed in a zone that is um, um, restricted to time or ruled by these instruments of time. But the, the, the realm that we were created from, that the sunlight was created from, and given this purpose of helping us to tell time, the realm that it came from originally is timeless. It's eternal. It's, it's infinite. In nature you see so this is what God is trying to show us here so we can't just be limited we will be limited to this realm of, of the light the lesser lights that we can measure its speed we've been able to measure the speed of um, of the this of light you know the lesser light and uh, so we feel like we know it all <laughs> So, and it's fine. Science can only show you what it can prove, what it can see, what it can relate to, what it can touch. But anyone who's saying that there's nothing beyond it is really in the dark. You see, but this whole teaching series will open your eyes to this truth. And like I said, if you get the book, we'll go into more detail so you can understand it really properly well. And you see, so God created the sun and all that for, for the sake of time, to create time. So we can time things because we will need it. For our sustenance on earth, we need time. And um, this light, but it's timeless. This light is timeless. The, the true light that created sunlight um, is timeless in itself. It doesn't have any restrictions of time. It created time for our purpose. And it told the sun specifically why you were created. You were created so you can help them tell times and seasons and bring and separate the night from the, from the day, the darkness from the light. So that was its purpose for which it was created. So all these things came from a timeless zone, but we need time to, to survive on the earth. We need time to live successfully on the earth for the purpose for which we were created. So time was given us, time was created, and, and the instruments that help to tell time, like the sun and all of that, and the rotation of the earth and all of that, is all for the sake of time. Okay, gravity, all of it, all these laws were put in place while these... Um, commandments were given, uh, creative commandments were being dished out by God. The laws of the universe that we know were being put in place to make these things possible. That's what scientists, that's what we've been able to measure. Okay, so but let's not get stuck there. There's more. And, and, and what else that's out there, we can still measure scientifically. Okay, now, um, Job. 38 and verse 19. You see, Job 38 and verse 19. Because if, if, you know, the problem we're having it with most scientists and humankind generally, anything that they can't see or measure um, with the five physical senses, uh, they, they just claim that it doesn't exist. Um, because they don't know where it is, they don't know how to find it, they don't know how to get there. But it exists. It's out there. I mean, the fact that you don't know it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So scientists and evolutionists and all these people shouldn't, they should stop claiming that there's nothing else out there, you know, just because they haven't been able to contact that realm. They haven't been able to uh, prove that realm with the, uh, the equipment that they have, the latest technologies that they have. It's still like uh, groping in the dark <laughs> compared to what's out there. You can say the latest technology we've been able to find out this and find out it's still you're still groping in the dark we haven't seen nothing yet we haven't seen nothing yet in fact the more we understand things like quantum physics and quantum magnetics we start to realize that we don't know jack <laughs> that we're still lost in the dark there is so much out there that we've got no clue yet at least some honest scientists are able to say that to you they'll tell you look the more we 
research and, and dig into quantum physics and uh, you just start to realize that you know people like Einstein were, were like you know with the laws of relativity and all that they were like you know <laughs> that this stuff is crazy you know so they come up with the laws of what they could see and try to measure these things but they said if you go into that realm of quantum mechanics um, you start to realize that there's a realm out there that science hasn't even begun to scratch the surface of it. And when we can, when we begin to do that, when we can actually, I'm, I'm encouraging science with all my heart, I love it. I love it when man, God wants us to search things out like that. He created it, he wants us to know what it's all about because man was the epitome of his creation. He wants man to, man was created to be just like him, a creative being. So he put that desire in us to search out these things. So I'm not against science in any way, I love science. You see, so but they should stop putting, um, um, they start casting things in stone and, and making making it look to, to the rest of the world like you know there's nothing beyond this. We've seen all there is, and anyone who's saying this is 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 lying or just being a religious fanatic or he doesn't know nothing. No, no, no. And and shortly sooner, some scientists have begun to prove a lot of things wrong that they've held on to and they've preached like it was gospel. You know, so that if we look at Job 38 and verse 19, someone actually knows where all this light came from. The light that brought about the sunlight and all the other lights that we've been able to measure the speed of light. We're able to measure the speed of light, the light, the lesser light. We can't measure the speed of the original light that created the lesser light. So, but someone knows where the original light is, where it comes from. And he knows he can point you to how to get to the original light. And when we can access the original light, we can bring its its creative power to bear even today on the earth. People are doing that already. So just because you don't know how to operate in that realm doesn't mean it's not there. You're the one who's losing out. You know, the atheists or those scientists who worship the god of science, who claim all kinds of stuff um, and kind of ref try to refute the scriptures of the Bible or God's point of view on it, uh, they, they're being, uh, would I say, they're losing out. I'm not going to say that they're being shamed every day because it's the level of knowledge that they have that they're trying to expose. And some of them outrightly tell lies just because they know you can't verify, like I said earlier. But they're being um, shown up for um, um, what it is that they're doing wrong. The more discoveries, the more honest scientists dig deeper and deeper and deeper and leave their hearts open you know, to to the fact that there, there are realities out there that they haven't even begun to understand. So they always leave it open. Well, they, look, it's possible, but we, you know, we'll keep searching, we'll keep digging and see what we can find. But we're trying to help them get there quicker because if it's already available. That knowledge that they're seeking is already available. So if they can begin to approach science with the understanding of this knowledge that we already have, they will stumble on things quicker. They will catch up quicker <laughs> and we can create and invent more things quicker when we can know how to when we learn how to access this light so someone knows where this light is light himself knows where it is you know and he was asking job a question very interesting question in job chapter 13 verse 19 i just want to quickly read that before we move on job 38 and verse 19 and i read where is the way where light dwell? this is when he was asking job certain questions because job was arguing God and, and, and all that, him and his friends, and, and God began to ask him certain questions. And he said, one of the questions he asked him, do you know where the way um, to light's house is? Where is the way where light dwells, the true light? He said, where do you know that light lives? Where do you know that it's coming from? And as for darkness, where is the place thereof? Verse 20 that thou shouldest take it to the bound thereof, and that thou shouldest know the path to the house thereof. <laughs> he said, do you know the way to, to, to light's house? As in where light lives? He said, but I do, God, God knows. He said, you don't know. So what, what are you complaining? What do you think, what, can you, what are you arguing about when you don't even know if I ask you to take me to light's house, take me to light's source, where does light come from? Where does it all originate from? 
all this light. I mean, scientists can measure how many electrons and protons and neutrons make up uh, uh, components of light and, and all this and all that. Where is it coming from? What's creating it? What's making it exist? Do you know? No, they don't know. I don't care if they tell you 100 billion years ago that light came into existence or there's a big bang. Where does it all come out from? Where does all that light come from? Where do all that, those electrons come from? Do you know? No, they don't know. How do electrons get created? Are electrons still being created today? Or is it the electrons that we've had ever since the beginning of, 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 of life? <laughs> where does matter come, matter come from? Where, where does all this emanate from? Do you know his house? Do you know the source? Do you know its house? Do you know where it lives? And then, you know, getting released to us from you don't know. And God said, well, I know. <laughs> I mean, light himself. I mean, if anybody knows where light's coming from, he knows. He said, but you've got to humble yourself and I'll teach you. That's what God's trying to tell Job. Calm down and I'll teach you where light is coming from. Because light has a home. It has a source. It has a root where it's coming out from. And if you, if you, if you, if you humble yourself enough and ask me, I can show you. Because I'm light. I know where I live. I know where I'm coming from. And that's the essence of this teaching series. We're going to know the truth. We'll find out all of that. You see, where life, where light is coming from and all that. So, um... Verse 5. Now listen. And this light, or the light shines in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not, or darkness can't handle it. Darkness can't stop or understand it. It shines in darkness, but darkness can't comprehend it, or can't handle it, or can't control it. It, it, it obliterates darkness, it eliminates darkness. Darkness can't, you know, darkness got nothing on this. When this light comes on board, darkness disappears. Okay, so this is a light that um, darkness cannot handle. And our physical senses can't handle or measure this light. We don't have any scientific equipment that can measure the speed of this light or that can contact this light. We do have what can. I'll be showing that to you as we go along. We, we, we have what can contact this light, what, how we can access it and how we can... Um, apply, make use of it, how we can reach it. You know, it's there, it's available. But not by these physical scientific equipments. No, there are other kinds of equipments that we will use to get across to, and which can be practically proven here on the earth. Practical. You can experiment, like the Apostle John said in the very first scripture that we read, you know, he's done the experiment. <laughs> he's handled it, he's used it, and he's analyzed it, and it works. And he's trying to show you so you can put it to work as well. Okay, now, um, so science is not able to locate it with the, with the scientific equipment that we have or analyze, observe, much less make use of it. So they're not unable to use it. Um, now, another point I made here is that this light didn't need, it doesn't need photosynthesis. It doesn't need um, the process of photosynthesis to get to do anything. And if you read in Genesis chapter 1, you see what I'm talking about. If you notice, okay, before the sun was created, and we know that photosynthesis has to do with the sun, you can't have photosynthesis without, um, plant life can't grow without sunlight. The process of photosynthesis can't take place without sunlight. But look, if ever before God created the sun to rule the day and, 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 do, and rule the day and the moon to rule the night, and photosynthesis and all of that. Before that happened, he created the plants and the herbs first. If you read Genesis chapter um, 1 and from verse uh -huh, 11, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass and herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind whose seed is in itself upon the earth and it was so and the earth brought forth grass herb yielding seed after his kind tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind and god saw that it was good and the evening and in the morning were 
the first day. So God brought forth herbs, grass, fruit yielding trees who would reproduce, who would reproduce after itself because the seeds are in them. Um, in verses 11 and 12 of Genesis chapter 1. Remember, the only thing that was in place that could have done this, the only uh, 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 raw material he had was the original light in verse 3. He said, light be. That true light, the very light that John said that God is that light that we read in Revelations is at the end we won't need the sun, we won't need the moon when the new Jerusalem, the heaven and earth is created and man, humankind uh, um, is relocated there that we won't need any other kind of light that he will be that light, he will come in his fullness of who he really is and that's the light that we will see so that light will be practically, it will be, it will be practically useful that means we can see because of that light we won't need sunlight, that light will shine on everything and we can see it. Right now, it's, I'll explain to you why it's removed from our sight because sunlight was given to give us light, but it's not that it's not there, it's still there, it's still scattered all, all across the universe. That's the light that sustains sunlight, but I'll show you all of that. Now, so, but this was the raw material. The sun hadn't yet been created by Genesis chapter one, verses 11, 12. This was the only raw material available was the original light. And he used it to create all the trees, the herbs, the grass, and all vegetation. Bef ever before the sunlight and he did that in one day so this light can create all the vegetation in the earth in one day it did not just that it can it actually did this is what God used to create all vegetation in one day then he created the sun in verse 14 three or four verses later then the sun comes in, and then he tells the sun look rule over it a lesser light to keep it going but the eternal qualities of the trees and the herbs and all of that weren't brought into existence from sunlight shining on them. They were created by the original light that created the sun itself. So everything was created from the original source. Everything. So, but all the sun is doing now is to rule over it because that's what it was created to do. Rule over it. He said that in verse 14 and 15. He said, in Genesis chapter 1, rule over them. Now you become the bedrock of life now. <laughs> that man can relate to. Humankind can relate to. You see. <laughs> so the sun was created to carry on what God had already put in place. The sun didn't create. It's not the light from the sun that gave life to vegetation. It didn't create nothing. It was only place there to rule over to continue to feed them with a lesser light that will keep them going but the true light was what created them and grew them in one day only the true raw light has the power to make things happen in one day these are stuff that the, the when you measure things by the lesser light that we can access with these scientific equipment we, we, we it would just seem to us that you you need billions of years for this to take place because you know how long it takes under photosynthesis, under the rule of the sun, not the rule of the original light, the true light that brought all of them to be, which God is. Under the rule of the sun, we know how long it takes for any, any plant or vegetation to grow to, to a certain degree. Some takes a year, some will take three months, some take a month, you know, so we've measured that, we know that. So we can calculate and say, well, it's, it, it's t it takes such a certain number of years or millions of years to this happen under the rulership of the sun, the light that we can relate to, that we can measure. And then we start to measure the light of the sun and say, oh, it must have taken, you know, based on this, it must have taken 10 billion years or 20 billion years for light to travel to here because we're measuring things by the speed of the light that we can measure, but we don't. Uh, we're limited because we have no knowledge of the true light that brought everything in place, that made everything uh, exist in one day. It took six days for God to create everything. The vegetation, one day. Sunlight, the moon, all that, you know, stars and everything out there in the galaxies and everything in the universe, one day. All that was put in place in one day. All by the force and power of that true light. It's the only thing that has the creative power to do this in one day at its own speed. We can't measure its speed, but its speed would look like billions of years when you measure it by light years. 
okay but this is a lesser light and he created that lesser light so we can have we'll be able to measure things you know in order to, to productively live on the earth as humankind so I hope I'm making sense so when we try to weigh existing things and try to measure them but we don't understand that the true light can put mountains and all those stuff in place in one day with the re required amount of heat it takes you see to put things in place in one day only the true light can do that before it then created a lesser light that we we can measure and start trying to compare you know uh, that's what we call light years is the lesser light we haven't even had any cognizance of the true light so in one day vegetation was put in place then the sun was given three verses later sun was created and given rule over it to carry it to keep it going to keep it going with a lesser light to just keep it going okay so um that's that for that for the purpose of creation now i also wrote here yeah we talked about so what is light made of the, the lesser light the sunlight and the light that we can measure scientifically with with our teeny weeny equipment with our little effort as human beings um that which we can measure is the lesser lights and so what are the lesser lights made of well the lesser lights which is scientific fact is made of protons neutrons and electrons that's what the lesser light that we can measure is made of so the light that we see you can't really see light you can only um sense light you can only know light light is something that you know it's not something that you can see but you can see its reflection or its effects on objects and, and elements and stuff so you can that's the only way you can you know measure light so we can't really see light so the light that we can measure or relate with um, is made of protons neutrons and electrons that's what that's what an atom is made of and that's those are the basic components of light and everything in existence is made of atoms and every atom is made of protons neutrons and electrons which is the components of light we've been able to measure that scientifically we found out we've been able to break down and see what in the light the lesser lights that we can measure what's it made of it's made of protons neutrons and electrons okay and you go further into protons neutrons, and electrons and the workings of the nucleus and you start to see stuff like um gluons and all of that but we won't go into that now the basic components of of light the light that we can measure it's it, uh, it's protons neutrons and electrons okay now what god did was to reduce the speed of the original light when he spoke these things into existence he reduced the speed of the original light that's the raw light that he is his own light, the light which God is, its speed was reduced to give us the light that we can measure its speed, the light that everything is made of. Okay, so but that light and all that is still made of the raw light, the original light, but the matter and all these particles are made from the lesser light that he uh, brought forth from the true light, reducing it in speed and it was able to come up with protons, neutrons, and electrons. So God is not made of protons, neutrons, and electrons, but he brought forth a lesser light that he made of protons, neutrons, and electrons, a slower light, a slower version of his light, okay? And then um, was a, you know, for, the, for the sake of creation, he had to do that in order to create matter from light. So he had to come out with the lesser, the slower light. It's slower, okay? Um, as we go on, I'll explain that more to you, where why God is everywhere at the same time. But light needs to travel. Light that we can measure needs to travel, so we even have a speed measured for it. It needs to travel from here to here. But there is a light beyond that light, faster than that, that we cannot measure. It's everywhere at the same time because it's too fast to measure. That's where this light that we can measure comes from. Okay? And some scientists have begun to um, uh, um, kind of um, feel the effects and impact of this greater light, this true light. They, they, they know it's there. They know it's beyond the light that they can measure. And they know it has an influence, so they kind of call it a weak force. Why they call it a weak force is because they can't measure its relationship with matter and the light that we have and our universe, but they know it's there. And many of them believe that this light came from that light. 
you know, but they can't really measure it. Uh, uh, some, some, some call it like, some would say that it's, it's like dark matter. I'm not saying dark matter is certainly God, but it, dark, matter is, dark matter is the only thing that scientists know that have, that, that have the same properties as what I'm telling you is the original light, the true light, okay, that everything else came out of. So, uh, dark matter, if you Google it, you can Google dark matter and just see the definition of it. It's, it's eternal in nature. It ha and time has no effect on it. It's there forever and ever and ever. You can't measure it. It's everywhere. It makes up, dark matter, I think they say, it makes up about 90-something percent of the entire universe. They call it dark matter because they can't see it. They can only feel its effect. It's like the wind. You know, the wind blows. You can't see it, but you can see the effect it has on your hair or, or your skin when it blows past. So they know that there's something beyond light that has effect on light and has effect on matter and has effect on everything. But they can't see it. They can't measure it. So, and the effect it has is not, um, it's not really measurable. So it's not something that they call it weak force. It's not a strong force that you can, you know, it's there and it has a, we kind of bond and I'll, I'll show you why God had to use it to create and then hand over to lesser lights that we can relate to and then kept it in the background kept the original light in the background still being the source of every other light and every other thing of all matter but it's it's um it's kept kind of like in the back it's kept away from where we can touch or see it but it's still holding everything together okay so um where were we? I was just trying to get all that out because I hope I'm making sense. But um, those of you who are following me, just follow me patiently. We're getting somewhere with this. You know, it's, it's soon going to make sense um, uh, for, for you as in practically in your everyday life, how you can actually access and use this light in every sphere of human endeavor. Okay. So we said the atoms, the light that we can measure, the lesser light that created that God used to create everything else, um, everything that we can see, is made of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Do so we take, for example, the human body? Uh, almost ninety-nine of almost ninety-nine percent, ninety-nine percent of the mass of the human body is made up of six elements: oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, calcium, and phosphorus. Okay. And only about 0.85% is composed of another five elements, potassium, sulfur, sodium, chloride, and magnesium. So we're, we're just, we're made up of non-living things. Our entire body is made up of, of, of oxygen. It's just elements. You see, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, calcium, phosphorus. These are things that you can go buy in the shops. You know, <laughs> that's what your entire body is made of. 99% of it's made of this stuff. And then 0.85% is made of some other elements uh, in lesser quantities like potassium, sulfur, sodium, chlorine, and magnesium. That's what your entire body is made of. Your eyeballs, your hair, your fingers, your, your, your heart, your blood. Everything's made up of these non-living things. Matter. And we know that all matter is made of atoms. And these atoms are made of the, 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 the three basic components of light. Protons, neutrons, and electrons. Every atom that makes up any of these elements, that makes up our human body, is made of light. Everything is made of light. It's, everything is made from light. Everything. Everything in existence is made of light. Everything. And um, um, if you look at carbon, for example, among these things that we're made of, carbon is one of, one of the things that we have the higher percentage of carbon in our system. Now, carbon has six protons. Those are the elements of light. Six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons. That's what carbon is. It's just six. So, when you, the, the more protons, neutrons, and electrons you have, the, the heavier the mass of the atom is, the more visible uh, that, that, that means the slower it is, it's, it slows it down, it's heavier, the more quantity of it that God presses into an atom, um, it gets heavier because uh, there's a particular element that he's trying to create or that he's creating. So he knows the, he knows the measurement, the number of protons he needs to put to have carbon 
in order to make the human skin or whatever part of your body. So six protons, six neutrons, six electrons, and that's the quantity you need to create carbon. And you, carbon, because it's heavy, because of its weight, it's, it's slower. So these are all the, the, the um, elements or components of light in the quantity. So like the higher the quantity, the higher the mass of the atom, the number of these things that are compressed, these elements of light that are compressed into an atom, the, the, the heavier it is, the, the, the heavier it is in mass, the more visible or slower they become and the more visible they are to the human eye. I, I, this is science now, I don't want to go too deep into the science of it, but, you know, um, uh, it's, let me give you an example. If um, you're looking at a car wheel turning, or a fan, let's say a ceiling fan, and the ceiling fan's turning, turning, and you put it on one and then you put it on two and it gets faster, and then three and four and five, maybe you get to five where it's at its fastest speed, at its highest speed, maximum speed, it starts to move so fast that it stays, it looks to your eyes like it's not moving, like it's stable, like it's just one fan. It, there are probably three arms to, to the ceiling fan, but you can only kind of see only one because they're moving so fast that your human eye can no longer see them. So the faster an, 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 an atom is, the faster an element is, the faster a material is, the more, uh, clo the closer to the original um, light, the original, its original component part, the closer it gets to that, the more invisible it becomes to the human eye. It just, you know, kind of becomes, it goes back into a gaseous state and then it disappears completely where you can't see it. You can't feel it, you can't see it, you can't contact it with your five physical senses. It's gone away from that realm. It's going more and more into the realm that some call the spiritual realm. So it's going more and more into the spiritual realm. You see, or, or the supernatural or the realm, the invisible realm. So now, the true light is the peak of the invisible realm. That's the, the root of the invisible realm. Okay, there's no scientific equipment that's been able to, to, to reach there. But the lesser lights also operate the same way. They're invisible to the human eyes, but elements, components, elements, uh, molecules, you know, the more um, atoms are put together, the heavier the mass, the slower it gets, and then the more visible it becomes to the human eye. I'll give you a final example on that. Water. Water is made of H2O. Is made of uh, two hydrogens um, and one oxygen mo uh, molecule coming together to form water, right? Uh, atom coming together to form the water. The water that you drink, you know, the water that you have in the sea and lakes and all that, the water that comes down, the rain water. So water is made of, um, it's, it's, it's made of two hydrogens and one oxygen atom bonding together, gives you water. Now, on their own, when you boil that water, huh? so when you boil the water, you apply heat. You so put water in a pot. This is practically what happens scientifically. Put water in a pot and, you know, put some heat on it. And it boils and boils and boils and boils and boils till it gets to uh, its boiling point. Let's say 100 degrees centigrade uh, Celsius is the boiling point. And then once it crosses that boiling point, the atoms that... Um, make up water, that's the two hydrogen and the oxygen that bond to, to create water that we can see, you, once they cross that boiling point, they gather so much heat, so much energy. Remember, light is energy. They gather so much light energy from the heat of the fire. They absorb so much energy that they separate. The bond is broken. And the moment that bond is, between oxygen and hydrogen is broken, the oxygen goes off on its own. It goes in, becomes instantly invisible to the human eye. It goes back into its original uh, uh, invisible state. So does the hydrogen gas. They go into the gaseous form. They go into the gas form, the gaseous form. They move into that realm where we can't see it visibly anymore. Okay. So when that happens, they go closer back to their original um, root source. And we know that that's light. You see? Protons, neutrons, and electrons, you cannot see them with the human eye. They go closer back to the realm. And the faster, the hotter, the faster, the more the, uh, the atoms are 
uh, they gather enough energy because they start to move really fast you see if you if you if you google you can google these things or check it on youtube science has gone so far into looking into these things you can actually see where atoms are picking up energy from heat if they're being heated and you see them bubbling up and they move faster faster to they escape you see and then they go into the gaseous form now i will show you a scripture that kind of explains some of that stuff um so let's look at john 1 3. john chapter 1 and verse 3. now here it says and all things were made by him that's light and without him was not anything made that was made this light everything you see was created from this light and without this light there's nothing in existence that is not made of light okay the true light brought forth the lesser light and the lesser light was what god used to form all matter all matter is made of light the lesser light the, the slower one all matter and then obviously that came from the true light so all matter was made from the true light he said there's nothing in existence anywhere in the universe that was not made from him that was not created from components of him okay they all came out from him everything and science can say that can say that as a fact that everything is made of light no scientist in his right senses would deny this fact everything is made of light everything everything in existence whether gas visible or invisible matter you know things that you can touch physically or not everything is made of light everything okay so this is scientific fact it's not something that you know it's not really it's going to do religion but it's already here in the bible there was nothing made that was not made from this light okay so everything is made of this light and then you see genesis 1 and 31 i wrote genesis 1 31 uh genesis 1 31 and god saw everything that he made and behold it was very good and the evening and the morning were the sixth day so on the sixth day when god finished all creation he saw that everything that light had brought forth everything that was created from light made of light everything in the universe was made of light he said he looked at all of it and saw that they were all good so everything made of light is good is good and that's why ecclesiastes 3 14 ecclesiastes 3 14 says i know that whatsoever god doeth Anytime you see God, you can replace it with the word light. Because we saw in 1 John 1, 5, God is light. I know that whatever light doeth, or this light, the true light, doeth, creates, invents, brings forth, whatever this light does, it shall be forever, or it will have infinite or eternal properties. It will last forever. It lives forever. It's eternal in nature. What Whatever light brings out or whatever light or whatever comes out from light it shall be forever nothing can um, put to it or be added to it and nothing uh, can be taken from it okay and God doeth it or light did it so that men will fear him or fear before him he said that this principle God made this principle. This principle is in place so that people will actually know or fear him and know that there's something beyond humankind. There's something beyond them that they can't, have, they can't understand, comprehend or handle. <laughs> he said, anything that light brings to being is eternal. That's why the scientists were able to stumble on the law that matter can neither be created nor destroyed matter can neither be be created nor destroyed that's what the science scientists have been able to find out but it's been in ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 14 for thousands of years <laughs> okay it's been there that anything that light creates cannot you said nothing can be added to it you can't create it or add anything to it and you can't destroy it you can't create an electron and add it to an electron. You can't add anything to what's already there. And you can't destroy what's there. I don't care what you do. You can't destroy it. 
All it does is to move from one form to another. So that law says matter can neither be created by man or humankind. We can't create matter. We can't destroy matter. We met it. We saw it. We, just, we can only observe it. And we can only begin to assume, you know, and try to observe its characteristics and begin to know how to apply it or use it or be able to make our inventions from it. But we can't create it and we can't destroy it. No matter what we do, we can't destroy it. <laughs> That's why I said atomic bomb is like lighting a matchstick where this thing is concerned. This stuff is deep. You can't destroy it. It can only move from one form to another form. You can only heat up water so much that it moves from the liquid form where you can see it. It moves into the gaseous form where you can't see it anymore. And you can't handle it. You can have equipment that can capture the oxygen and use it for something else, but you can't destroy it. You can't. You didn't make it, so you can't destroy it. <laughs> Anything you do to it, we just move it from one form to another. You throw an atomic bomb somewhere and blow up everything there. All that sand and rubble and everything you blew up with the atomic bomb, it only changes from that form you see that it was before the explosion hit it to another form. It just changes form. Some will go and immediately be burned up into their gaseous form and some will be turned into another element. You see, a darker roasted element but it's, an, it's still it's not been destroyed. It just changed form and science has been able to come up with that as one of the principal cardinal laws of science. But it's been in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 14 for thousands of years. Okay? So now, so we've established that. So we agree that science and, and, and religion, or the or Judeo-Christian Bible, are in sync. That they, this is the, they meet at that point. <laughs> that anything that light creates, anything made of light, cannot be created by any human being. And it can't be destroyed by anyone. No matter what equipment you use. You can't create it. You just met it here. You can only study it. And you can only make it change, move from one form to another form if you apply heat to it or apply some other laws to it. But you can't, you can't destroy it. You can't. You know, you can't. Only light himself can destroy it. Like he did in Genesis chapter, um, sorry, Revelation chapter 22, 21 and 22. He said a new heaven, Revelation 21 verse 1 to 3, he says a new heaven and a new earth descended. So he, so he rolled away. This old heaven and earth were passed away. He's, he's the only one who can destroy it. Because he's the only one who knows the source of this light. So he's the only one who can destroy this light. You can't destroy what you have no control over. You see? He said he's the only one who can destroy it. Because he's, he'll create, he will create a new one. And said so in this new one, you won't need sunlight anymore. You won't need, I'll just let the original true light that created the sunlight, that created it with that first light he put in place in Genesis chapter 1 verse 3. That will be the only light available and he will make it visible to the new race of human beings that he will put in the new heaven and the new earth, in the new, new Jerusalem. Yeah, because he will come down and live with us by himself. And that the only light that we need is the light coming from him. And we can see everything. And we can see it face to face and he can see us in the form that we will be in at that time. Okay, so but let's carry on. Um, again, in John chapter 1. John chapter 1. And verse 9, this is where he tells you that there's a difference between the lesser light and the true light. The lesser light that we can measure, the light beaming from the sunlight and all that. And then there's a true light that created that light that we can measure. The true light we cannot measure. Okay, but it's there. And it brought everything else into being. So in John chapter 1 verse 9, this is where the Bible says this. This, this has been written like two, this one's been written for almost 2,000 years now. He said that was the true light. He was not the light. Let's read from verse 8. Okay. Let's read from verse 7. Let's take it from verse 6. Okay. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This is John the Baptist, a different John. The same came for witness to bear witness of the light. That John the Baptist, all he came to talk about was this light. And that all men through him might believe in this light. Now he was not the light. See, John made it clear, I'm not the light, but I came to tell the world about this light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Verse 8, verse 9 now, that was the true light. This is the true light, not the candle light, not electricity light, not sunlight. This is the true light, okay, that lighted every man that cometh into the world. This is the true light. 
that lighted every man that cometh into the world. This is the true light that brought every, everything and every man into existence. This is the true light. So he had to put the word true there because he knows that we know of the sunlight. We know of candlelight and you know, other fire lights and other lights. Then they didn't have electricity. Now we know of electricity light. So we know, you see, but this is the true light. This is the core, original light that brought out everything else. Okay, scientists, pay good attention and religious folk, everybody pay attention. It's all, it's been in there, all this while. Okay, he makes that clear. Um, right, and if you read in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3, Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3. Remember, Hebrews 1 verse 3 says, Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged us and sat on the right hand of the majesty on high. Who being the brightness of God's glory, he's the brightness of that glory, the express image of the person, his image, the express image, that's the perfect image of who God is. It's all about Jesus here, who is the Son of God. He looks exactly like his Father. And is upholding all things. So that light is still in existence and it's upholding everything. It's keeping everything working. It's keeping the earth rotating. That's why everything that light creates, it upholds. It keeps it going. And because that light is eternal in nature, everything it creates is eternal in nature. You can't create it. You can't destroy it. You can only play around with it. And you can only play around with the one that he's reduced the speed of it. You see? From the speed of light, from the lesser light, which is we can measure the speed of light, to the, the, the matter, the atoms, the particles that, uh, you know, that we can touch now and feel, our physical human body, they're all light, slowed down and compounded in different measures. That's why we have the periodic table. You see, each element in the periodic table tells you how many... Um, protons and neutrons and electrons, that's the components of light, how many of it was put together, like carbon, we say we have 666 six, six of them, uh, uh, how many of them, in oxygen you have 12 this and 12 that, so how many of them were put together in order to form this element, okay, and that's why this element is gaseous, but then the more of it was put together to form maybe magnesium, or more of it was put together to form copper, more of it was put together to form gold, which is very heavy and you know so the more of it the heavier the low the less the speed because the more of it is compounded together it slows and slows and slows and gives you a different element so god made the periodic uh, the different elements we have about 160 something of them elements on the periodic table that man has been able to discover and each element is used for one thing or another so god put every single one of them in place each one having its purpose each one you know having what it does okay so he's saying that there's, he said he's upholding and with the true light, with the original light, the express image of God, he's still upholding everything in place. This is why he said you can't create or destroy it. I don't care how much of a scientist you are, you will never be able to create matter and you will never be able to destroy it. Okay, you just have to go to God and find out how old these things are and how, how these things are to be used and you know what more can, you just have to, uh, trace your steps back to the real source. The information has been available all this while in this in the Judeo Christian Bible. It's all over the place with details. But we're going to get to how you can actually practically use this light and how you can contact it, how you can, you know, make contact with that realm, okay, and be able to bring it to bear on 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 the earth in your personal life and on this earth and your environment and for for the um betterment of mankind for the development of man of humankind okay so yeah everything's been held together by it so like i said i compare it a lot to dark matter they know that everything kind of is swimming in an ether surrounded by dark matter we're all living in some kind of ether surrounded by dark matter scientifically speaking you know they know that this, this stuff is 90 something percent of all it's just we're living in it we're just in an ether of light, you're surrounded by it. We all live in it. Every everything in existence lives within that. That is covered within the ether of 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 of, um, of light. You see. Um, so okay. So we talked about changing forms. 
you see so just the way you boil water and water changes its um, form so also you um, you um, <clears throat> uh, you can move from one level to another in physical things that we can measure with boiling hot water uh, boiling water to the boiling point and it becomes gas so also everything is stratified everything is in 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 in, in, in uh, different spheres everything is put in different compartments that's how god is he puts things in different spheres and different forms you can't create or destroy these things but you can you can move from one form or one sphere to the next sphere you see by applying certain laws or applying more light or more energy more power to yourself it's just like um, the way water turns to gas when you give it the right amount of energy when you allow it absorb enough heat energy enough light energy it changes into its gaseous form where the human eye can't see it anymore okay so also like if you're trying to launch a rocket out of this sphere out of the atmosphere and all the spheres that we have into space you, it, you need to give it enough power energy heat light you need to apply enough light energy to it. You need to cook up enough light energy. And you see them rockets when they're going. You can see how much light energy needs to be applied for them to whoop, just take off and be able to soar and break through these different spheres, these different barriers. Each sphere creates a barrier. And there's laws that enable you to break through each sphere, each barrier. Okay? And the same thing goes. Um, for and these spheres, God purposely put them in place, like I'll show you Genesis chapter 1. The atmosphere, the, um, the, the air that you have, and 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 um, the waters, and you know, God divided them on purpose. He puts what He calls firmaments, He puts gulfs or firmament divides. It's deliberate, that's how God is. He puts things in compartments, He puts them and limits things to this sphere. It's all done deliberately. And, and each one is done purposefully. He has a reason why he does that. For example, in Genesis chapter 1, we see when he divided the atmosphere okay, from the, the, the sea and the land and the ground. He separated the sea from that from the air. He says, and God said, let there be a firmament. Verse 6, Genesis chapter 1, verse 6. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters. Okay. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament. Okay. From the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven or the heavens or the atmosphere. Of the original translation is not the heaven where God lives. It's the heavens or the sky. The atmosphere heaven the meanings are different from this heaven is different from the heaven there's another heaven beyond that or there's another sphere or realm beyond this realm where you step into the heaven where god is you know so but he's already classifying it into different levels and different strata different uh, spheres that you have to have enough energy to break through each one so he separates the water from the air the cloud and you know water and the air are made of the same thing the same hydrogen and oxygen Remember, well, you have to boil water hot enough for it to go into the gaseous form and go into being in the atmosphere. But it all takes energy to move from one firmament, one sphere to the next, to break through the firmament that divides them. Energy is required to break into any sphere. I'm saying, all, pay attention to what I'm saying because I'm saying all of that to arrive at something that will be like a, a breakthrough for you, so that you can know why we're limited. In science and in religion, in other ways, we're limited from having access to that true light. It's all put in compartments and it's all put in spheres. You need a certain amount of energy to cross from one sphere to another. And you can see that in the science of the world around us. It's very obvious. That's how God is. That's how he, he programmed everything. That's how he designed everything to be. Okay. He says, so he separated the waters. That's the sea, the waters that we can see, the seas and the waters that we can physically observe from the waters in the sky it's the same component they're both made of the same thing but there's a firmament or a divide or a gulf that separates one from another so the water from the sea without the adequate laws being applied the, uh, the right amount of heat being applied to them they can't just jump up and go into the sky they can't 
They can't cross that firmament. They can't break through that firmament on their own. They can't do it. Except certain laws are applied in order to move them to the next sphere. Okay, so straight out from the Bible, Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So here, this is the Apostle Paul writing by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, all scriptures inspired of God. And he's saying that you have a spirit that has a soul and it lives in your physical body. Okay, you need to understand this. Man is, in, is a triune being. He has three compartments as well. Man is broken into three. He, has a, he is a spirit. Man is a spirit. Not that he has a spirit. Man is first and foremost a spirit. Or humankind. So human beings are first and foremost um, spirits. And that's, I'm saying that so that you know this man and woman. You know, we just use the word man to, you know, for both men and women. But let's say humankind, men and women, are made our spirits. And they have souls. They live in the physical body. Okay. So you know, spirit, you have a soul and you live in the physical body. With that understanding, you can now begin to see um, why you're unable to access certain truths and certain realms where you can actually see the truth and see how things work from the source to affect other realms so with with your body you you can access or contact the physical realm with your five physical senses you can access and contact the, your physical realm just the three-dimensional realm you can contact that with the body and that's the that's with the slowest elements in in in, in existence that god created you know, the carbon everything that your physical body is made of can access everything that the apple that you eat is made of you see is all made from dirt is all made from soil is all made from the same component as what's in the soil what's in the earth what's in the ground the the slowest elements they've been uh, jam-packed with the atoms that give them enough mass to be physically um, contactable and visible to the human eye so we can relate with them so we can Eat these plants that are made of the same dirt that we're made of. And so we eat them, then they go in and they hook on. The proteins are formed and they hook on to themselves and attach and form. You know all the stuff. The biologists can tell you a lot more how nutrition takes place, and then you get the energy out of it. It's able to squeeze the light energy out of it, and it supplies that energy to your body because it's all made of light. So when you're eating and consuming stuff, it gets digested and energy is released. It gives energy to your system. It gives light to your system. So you can, you keep driving your engine. You keep going on. It gets light. Energy goes into your brain, your heart, and everywhere. It circulates. The blood pumps it around. The heart pumps it through the blood. So the cells, they're all, they're all, um, um, they're all interrelated. And they're all, it's all about light. It's all about light, which is energy. It's all about light. So your physical body contacts that realm, that physical realm, in order to keep going. Your soul as well, you see, contacts the mental, the intellectual, the emotional okay, realm. The will, the realm of the will, where you make your choices. Where you have the power of choice. And that God gave us that power of choice. And no one should ever take it take that away from us. The moment you do that, you, you, you become a robot, you become like an animal. And that's what happened at the Garden of Eden that we explained in, in the former clips, episodes that we had earlier, uh, earlier episodes, we explained um, the whole thing about Adam and Eve and how they disobeyed God's commandment and fell out of light and fell into darkness. Okay, so and they became like animals and they just had to live by their five physical senses. They lost touch of that realm, with that realm. So um so with the soul you're able to you know make decisions and have your will your choice okay your emotions and all of that your intellect and um the body trains the brain you see so the, the soul is the only thing that is the go between the spirit realm 
and the physical realm. The three-dimensional physical realm. This, the soul is like the go-between. It's a part of your soul that's wired to your brain. Okay? And the body trains that part of your soul. So, for example, what I mean by the body trains your brain um, is if a child puts his hand in fire when he's like a two, three-year-old baby and it burns him, before that time he had no knowledge or understanding that fire burns except someone told him. But most likely he would have been roasted, he would have had his finger roasted or she would have had a finger roasted. That child would have, would have um, touched something hot and it burnt them. And the brain records that against that particular substance that, that caused, caused the burning, the, the pain. The brain records it. So all through life the brain is recording um, the different effects and consequences of, of different things in our lives. The brain's recording it. So your, your, your five physical senses trains your brain. It's not the other way around. Your brain isn't telling you what to do per se. It's just repeating what has been trained by your experiences and all of that. It's repeating it. It's, it's protecting you based on that. That's what it's designed to do. The brain has no intellect of it. It has no power of its own per se. It's not the brain can't teach you anything. So it, it's what the five physical senses has taught the brain okay that the brain is able to then replay or repeat or live by so next time you come against that object that burnt your fingers when you were a kid the brain reminds you that that's the stuff that burns and that oh that's true and you keep your hands away from it you see so the your five physical senses trains your brain so your soul is wired to that part but then there's the part of your soul that's wired to your spirit so that's why I say the soul is the only go between the two sides. It's the only thing that can cross between the two realms. Um, so there's a part of your soul, the other half of your soul, or part of your soul, is wired to your spiritual side, that's your subconscious side, that's not trained by your five physical senses. It's trained by your spirit, that it picks information from your spirit, or the subconscious realm, or the su supernatural, or the invisible realm. It picks stuff from there. And it can pass that stuff, transmit that stuff, okay, to your mind and to, for your brain to take action on it here in the physical world. And you will also see the consequences of that. Okay, so, um, so we're, 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 we need to understand that too because, we, like we said, there's different realms. And how to access each realm is what the problem is for humankind. Humankind's problem is we're restricted to one realm, maybe the, the physical realm. So we get locked in on that realm and we lose out on the real thing, the real deal. Because <laughs> this physical realm is the slowest realm, it's the smallest realm, it's the lowest realm. I know it's the realm that we have to deal with on, you know, every day, but it's not the realm that, the, 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 the higher realms, the soul and the spiritual realm, are the realms from which the physical realm came. So they, they control it forever. They control that realm, this realm forever they they impact it they create what happens here but we just have to know how to access that um, supernatural realm and once we learn how to add, uh, access that realm so like i said the five physical senses accesses this realm the soul accesses the mental emotional will realm of intellect and all of that and um, then the spirit has access to the spiritual realm the invisible realm the realm where the true light is it's your spirit that has access to that realm. So you can develop each one of these three realms. You can develop your physical body so well, you know, and you can do incredible things with your physical body. But you have to develop it. You can do incredible things with your intellect, with your mind. You can do, there's some people who have developed their brain. They say that we haven't even started to scratch the surface of what the mind can do, the human mind can do that we only use about 10% of our brain or our mind, of our intellect. We've only, we've only scratched the surface of it. You can develop your mind so well, your brain, your, your intellect so well that you'd be like a superhuman being where intelligence is concerned and all of that. And then you can develop your spirit. And that's where we miss out. The most important realm is the spirit realm. You can develop your spirit to the point where <laughs> you be having contact with the true light where everything else came from with ease and you'll be able to tell people here 
how to physically identify the true light and its its operations in our physical life how to bring it to bear in our physical life how to you know this is how miracles take place we were able to bring um, the power the energy the light of that true light <laughs> bring it out from that realm and know how to deliberately apply it to say someone who's got some kind of disease in his physical body some cancer or something in his physical body and be able to bring that original light from there and and apply it to that physical ailment here in this dimension in this third dimension or three-dimensional world and be able to straighten it out and fix it to how it was originally supposed to be the way the true light made it at the beginning to take it back to its original state and even better like a newborn baby you see so but um so people who are limited and can only roam around in the physical realm or move around in the realm of the intellect but they just they just shy away from the realm of the spirit and they just because it's not a realm that you can easily access with the intellect or with your physical body they're like oh it doesn't exist it doesn't exist forget about that it doesn't exist but they are limited and being limited they can never fully um, 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 tap into the the true source of the glorious lifestyle of man of humankind they miss out so we keep groping in the dark and keep managing all kinds of we're living far below our creative purpose because we have not been able to reconnect to that to the realm of the spirit the spiritual realm. so we can but we can and that's the essence of this these teachings to help us reconnect to that realm you see and when you connect to that realm it affects your intellect you start having some super super human levels of intellectual pros and intellectual abilities believe me you don't know nothing yet you, 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 you don't understand nothing yet until you can step into that realm and begin to see stuff and interpret that stuff to your to your to your soulish realm your intellect and all that and be able to bring that out into the physical world here you know it, it just it just places you on another level you start to have you know the mind of Christ you say, but we can, we're going to get there how to do that and, and 